effort to restore order is Steve Rogers, a retired police officer and a member of the Trump 2020 advisory board. So, Steve, when we look at what's going on in the country right now, of course, we've had weeks of protests, but the latest focus is on the city of Portland. And the president says that he's planning on expanding Operation Legend to include more cities. We've already seen some uh, DHS personnel going to Chicago. But what do you think about this latest decision? Is it as controversial as many people say? No, it's not. It's only controversial for the Democrat socialists who are controlling these cities, hindering the ability of the president to do what? To fulfill his responsibility as president. And he's articulated this several times, and that is to protect the people from both domestic and foreign uh, threats. And in this case, it's a domestic threat, and he's doing what he is obligated to do. And when it comes to this issue, too, I mean, it's not being portrayed accurately. I mean, at the very beginning, we were told that these were unmarked officers, only to learn that they have badges on literally every side of their body. In fact, there's pictures of it. You can go and check yourself. They were saying that they were going around the city of Portland, just necessarily just kidnapping people, which we now know is not necessarily the case. Their memorandum, their mission, rather, is to protect that federal courthouse and prevent other federal crimes from taking place. So is there anything else that the White House or the Trump administration could be doing to in order to make sure that this violence is put to rest? Well, they're doing everything possible within the framework of the law and of the Constitution. And to your point, uh, there has been a false narrative that is being expressed by the left that these people, meaning these uh, DHS agents, uh, these police officers, are attacked or are attached to the U.S. military. That's not true. They have nothing to do with the military. They have nothing to do with the Defense Department. These are federal law enforcement officers who have been tasked to do what? to protect the citizens. And I've said this over and over and over again. These Democrats that are controlling these cities, go and ask the people being shot at, whose kids are being killed, for goodness sakes, see if they want these federal or law enforcement uh, officers in their neighborhood. And you'll find that just about 100% support the president's plan to do this. And it's not just people in the community either who are uh, necessarily feeling the wrath of these things, that being the people, as you mentioned, who are the victims of violence, those who, for, who are seeing their small businesses be destroyed in these inner cities. It's also the other people in the community. I mean, there's a reason why that these are limited to a couple thousand people, and it's because what is happening is not representative of the greater community. If that was the case, we'd be seeing the entire city of Portland out on the streets instead of just a couple thousand people who want to burn down a courthouse. But this has prompted a conversation among some of those on the left saying that we need to revisit whether or not we have a Department of Homeland Security. Is that a ridiculous statement or is there some merit behind those claims? Uh, look, absolutely no merit to revisit what is going on with the Department of Homeland Security. But here's what the left and what the socialists and the Democrats are not talking about. They're not talking about who is behind all of the violence, who's financing the violence. And I've done some research myself, and I see great, great connections to the Socialist uh, uh, Party of America and the Communist Party of America. So there's some uh, indications that a lot of this is being financed by people who want to bring this country down. And to your point, and it's very important, most of the people we see protesting uh, and committing these terrorist acts don't live in those neighborhoods. They don't live in those cities. They are being financed by perhaps foreign operations. And this is something that the uh, Department of Justice, I know, is investigating. And when we look at what's happening, too, I mean, we've already covered, for example, how the Black Lives Matter organization does have some political agenda behind just necessarily police reforms. They also do have a more Marxist agenda. They've said it themselves. But that's the same thing, for example, with Antifa and a lot of these demonstrators on the street as well. It's not necessarily just about police reforms. It's not just about burning down this courthouse in Portland. It's about instilling a new type of government in this country. So big picture, is this a little bit more than just the protest, the demonstrations that we're seeing right now, is there something bigger behind the scenes? There is something bigger, and that something bigger was articulated by President Ronald Reagan in his time. When he, there were problems like this going on with the Communist Party, Ronald Reagan said, look, we, the American people, may think that we're not at war with these people, but they believe they are at war with us, and they're looking to take this country down. It no longer has anything to do with racism or their idea of police brutality. It has everything to do with taking this country down. This is why President Trump is doing what he is mandated to do. And it's right now it's becoming very effective. I, I just wish to be frank with you that more Republicans would publicly stand with the president on this what this mission to save our country.
And that last point is an important one, too. I mean, you bring up the idea that these people on the streets and as well as some Democratic elected officials as well, they are willing to burn down the entire system in order to instill what they believe. And it's something to some degree you have to give them credit for. They're out there fighting for it. They're willing to do it. But they're not matched with that same intensity by those on the right who want to instill the America that they believe in. It's the, a lot of times they're rolling over, especially on this issue right now. And I mean, we were we've been talking throughout this program, actually, that the left is winning this war in a lot of degrees, especially when it comes to the culture war, because Republicans are unwilling to stand up to them at this very time. We hear it from several people, and I think it's something that they do need to take action on if they want to have a voice in this fight. But Steve Rogers, I appreciate you coming on, breaking down what's happening in Portland. Thank you. And still ahead, we've been talking about it.